Hello everyone and welcome to our short video about the demand sensing capabilities within SAP's Integrated Business Planning or IBP solution. In this video we will be focusing on how planners typically use SAP IBP's demand sensing capabilities. Demand sensing bridges tactical and operational processes. The first thing it does is it leverages internal demand signals to sense short-term demand. These include your consensus demand forecast, and other internal signals like sales, shipments, promotions, and future open orders. Secondly, demand sensing is also able to leverage various external demand signals, such as retailer point of sales, customer store inventories, social sentiment, weather, market research, so on and so forth. By analyzing and learning from these various demand signals, demand sensing optimizes the granular short-term sensed forecast. The demand sensing process resides between consensus demand planning and operational supply and deployment planning, bridging tactical and operational processes. Traditional consensus demand planning and forecasting process relies on statistical models which run on historical sales to draw a picture of the mid to long term future demand. This mid to long term horizon usually focuses on the next 6, 12 to 24 months. Forecasting is usually done in a weekly or monthly buckets and is rerun with a similar cadence. The forecast is also usually at an aggregate level, such as a product, customer group, or geography level. The natural question becomes, how do you translate these forecasts to a level that drives execution? How do you arrive at a daily detailed forecast to drive operational processes? That's where demand sensing comes in. It leverages the power of machine learning and pattern recognition to optimize daily forecasts for each SKU, each location, and each customer, leveraging multiple demand signals across your supply chain. So how do planners typically use SAP IBP demand sensing? In this video, you will learn how SAP IBP demand sensing helps planners review demand planning and sensing performance, focus on exceptions, and review detailed results and get visibility into demand drivers. Planners can easily review KPIs and performance with SAP IBP. As a planner, I look at my performance dashboard periodically to stay on top of demand planning and sensing performance and any issues that need my attention. Planners typically keep track of alerts that need their attention and also a comparison of consensus demand and sense demand in terms of forecast error and bias. These alerts, KPIs, analytics are all configurable and can reflect what you deem important for your business. For me in my dashboard, on the left top corner, I see that I have a few alerts that need my attention. I will come back to this in a minute, but first I'd like to explore my KPIs and see how things are going for my products. On the right top corner, I see a little bit of the recent history plus the future projection in an aggregated view for all my products. Here I see a comparison of sense demand versus consensus demand. Consensus demand without any demand sensing intervention is shown as the black line and sense demand is uh, the blue line. I can see both the last four weeks and also the next six weeks of projections here. I also see the actual shipments I have made and also the actual uh, custom orders that I received in the same time frame as well. In the future I also see my open orders. Now when I look at the past performance I see that sense demand has done a better job staying closer to sales when compared to consensus demand without demand sensing. And in the future I see that demand sensing is detecting that we are mostly under forecasting when it comes to consensus demand and it is um, lifting the demand expectations up to compensate for this. On the left bottom corner, I have an important comparison graph. I see the weekly mean absolute percentage error results for the past four weeks. I see that the mean absolute percentage error for consensus demand was around almost 73%, but with sense demand, we were able to reduce that to 46%. So demand sensing has helped me get 27 percentage points reduction in forecast error. I also look at my KPIs across different categories that I manage. One of the important things I look at is the categorization of my demand by volume and by volatility, the classic ABC XYZ type analysis. And I'm looking at the demand sensing improvement I see across these categories 
and I see various levels of percentage point improvements brought to me by demand sensing, including some sizable improvements for a very hard to forecast item. I also look at my results in terms of the key product groups that I manage. And I see here my forecast error by my groups X, Y, and Z, and also the bias for groups X, Y, and Z. I can compare consensus demand results versus sense demand results. I see that demand sensing has improved the forecast for the three major product groups that I manage, including the very hard to forecast group C, where it reduced forecast error in terms of mean absolute percentage error uh, by a significant amount. I also see that demand sensing has helped me control forecast bias generally in a better way. For group X, it made the forecast much more better centered Group Y is a problem group for us, although the forecast error has been not too bad recently, we've had significant negative bias or overselling type issues. And I see that sense demand has detected and responded to this much faster, cutting the negative bias by more than half. Now let me go back and review my alerts. I've set up alerts that alert me if consensus demand and sense demand are far apart. I do have a few cases of this alert. Let me jump in and investigate. I see the list of alerts following the rules I have defined. Planners typically set threshold based alerts that help them see when sense demand is considerably different than consensus demand, or when forecast error or bias have been too high in recent weeks. An alert for product 14 catches my attention because this has been a product we've struggled with in the past. Let me take a look and see the detail. I see that for certain weeks in the planning horizon, sense demand is almost half compared to consensus demand. Let me take a look at what might be causing this and if I have to do any corrections. When I go to the product level dashboard for this product, I can get a lot of information to help me decide whether I need to do anything for this alert or if the results make sense. The first thing I look at is a historical plus future view of the product. What I see at my fingertips is the past sales, which is shown in green, the consensus demand, which is shown in black, and also the sense demand quantity, the optimized sense demand for the planning horizon, which is shown in blue. Let me zoom in and take a closer look here. When I look at the detail, I see that we have struggled keeping up with the peaks and valleys of the demand here. We've been almost alternating between underselling and overselling, not really quite able to capture the peaks of sales and the bottoms in sales. But what I see from demand sensing is that it really flows well with the pattern of the green line, which is historical sales. It is understanding that another peak is coming and then it will go away uh, and become a valley. So this looks like it's doing a much better job than the consensus forecast. And actually, it is also estimating quite a bit of improvement. It is also showing me the reasons why it's adjusting consensus demand, why it's correcting it. Looks like it is detecting some recent over forecasting, which is evident. But also it is understanding that open order trends currently are pointing toward us going to another uh, peak in the demand. With this information at my fingertips, I'm okay with this alert, and I think demand sensing has made the right decision here. In this video, we have covered how SAP IBP demand sensing helps planners review demand planning and sensing performance, focus on exceptions, review detailed results, and get visibility into demand drivers. Through these demand sensing capabilities, companies typically see a sizable reduction in forecast error across different lags of the forecast, ranging from 2 to 10 percent points for longer lags to 10 to 25 percent points in shorter lags. Exact improvement, of course, will depend on the nature of the business, the industry, and how mature the demand planning process itself is. In summary, demand sensing is a powerful capability to optimize short-term forecasts based on pattern recognition using multiple demand signals. It brings technical processes closer to execution and provides daily granularity into upcoming demand in a highly automated fashion. This automation is very important. It frees up planner capacity by taking the daily guesswork out. The improved short-term forecast accuracy and increased automation result in better decisions 
and business results around deployment, allocation, transportation planning, inventory levels, and better on-shelf availability. Thank you for your time. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You're also always welcome to contact us with any questions.